Welcome back to What Have You. I'm Rachel Jankovic. I'm Becca Merkel. We took a week off on accident. Yeah, it was kind of, well, you were traveling, I was traveling. Yeah, yeah but we traveling. didn't, we thought we would squeak it in ahead of time yeah, and we didn't. We but did we're not. back. It's back. spring break. Spring break and for spring break, some of the snow is melting. Piles of snow everywhere, you guys. Yeah, Huge. but it's but it's supposed to be getting warmer and melting it. But so the first few days of spring break, it just snowed, it snowed again, through, like blizzard. blizzard Adding times. insult to injury, it kept snowing but, on us. No, I think I'm looking on the bright side. It's still really pretty, and usually March is a big sloppy mud festival, so it's about to be is it a today, sloppy mud festival. Isn't today Pie Day? It is Pie Day. Yeah. Happy Pie Day, everyone. Yep. That yeah. I I have to say is a just a weird anecdote that my fourteen year old daughter who likes math fine but it's not that she's deeply into it yeah. she likes it right out pops the surprise to us that she was <laughs> she said well for our pie day celebration which was not today it was earlier she was like well we can it was like we could bring in something round or we can memorize pie. Yeah, she's like. I think I'm just gonna memorize pie because I think I. Um, she was like, I think I only have to memorize like 70 more digits to get the school record, and I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Turns out she already had pie memorized out to 70 digits, which is useful. Why? I was like, when did <laughs> when did this happen? Why did you memorize pie out to 70 digits? And and she did break the school record by making it to I think it was to 200 digits of why pie. why i was like but the funny thing to me is that sounded it sounded easier to her to memorize pie to 200 digits see, than I've to do some other like, thing that wasn't like that like bring in a pie that's what mm-hmm. our people did is just bring in a pie right make a pie for pie day yeah oh well yeah but that you was know funny. those movies that are always kind of like espionage sorts of I don't know what I'm thinking of people who are spies who automatically can just speak Farsi out of nowhere or right they they know immediately is it because to... their brain was programmed with no, some downloaded they're just, something they're just <laughs> elite operatives mm-hmm. but anyway uh, they seem to with... always be able to just take a glance at a bank account number and then they just know it know it, it? yeah maybe it's Lena's a skill that. it's it a might skill. be that. <laughs> She's, she's like working on that. But she said, See no, she it's just Farsi. that in their classroom, in one of their classrooms up on the wall is pi to 70 digits. That's what I'm saying. And she said, so sometimes you would finish your assignment and there was nothing else to do, but you right. needed to do something. Get her to memorize wow. your bank account number. It might come in handy. Just practice or like glancing. I mean, why would yeah. she need to do that? But, Glance yeah. and remember. Glance at people's credit card numbers remember and know it immediately. Digits. That sounds on the up and up. <laughs> She just might have one of those brains. So that's how we celebrated Pi Day at our house, that's was exciting. having one delegate memorize <laughs> Pi out to 200 digits. Uh, uh, I love those things. Many years ago, I read something about this, that families actually operate on the... Families or groups of people that are together often operate on kind of shared brain principles. Okay. And the example they gave at the time is that only one person in your family knows how to program the answering machine oh, or, or like the, the, uh, record, you know, some kind of recorder or only one person knows how to do those tasks, like change the filters on something mm-hmm. or, and that, and they're saying that everybody else is like, I don't have the brain space to no. waste on this. No. So we use a shared See, brain in, in our family. This has become Jemima with the coffee maker because Ben got me a new coffee maker for my birthday because our old one was just going on the blink. And I wanted this. It was a pretty sort of Italian one that I liked and it grinds the beans for you, you know. Yeah. Anyway, I have never made coffee in it. I ha- I don't know how to work it. I don't know. And, so and your my gift was the coffee maker like, and the daughter yeah, to figure it out. Six months ago is when I got this coffee maker, and I have yet to make coffee in it. But you're drinking coffee. I'm drinking it. coffee. Really, she is a wonderful child. She gets <laughs> up and she makes the coffee. I, but so, see, that's the thing I think is so funny is that that concept of I won't bother to learn this because somebody else is, yeah. and I. Here we can segue into a more complicated spiritual topic, but how 
that is a natural human thing to rely on someone to do the complicated thing right. that like to learn it and like, well, man, I'm not going to bother with that. But how dangerous that is in spiritual issues to act like, well, my husband is going to be the one who cares about yeah. something being biblical and I won't worry about it. Yep. I'll expect him to do reading the owner's manual on our mm-hmm. faith and I mm-hmm. will just coast along and never learn how to do that myself. It's true. It and, true. you know, and your kids can do that. Like well, if, the thing is, is like we, yes, we are, God puts us in families and in covenants and in mm-hmm. networks of people, but we will all stand before God as individuals. Mm-hmm. And so you at that can't, time. You can't come drafting on anyone to the no. gates of heaven, <laughs> sort of like. He'll answer for me. Yeah. He knows what we believe. (laughs) You know, I don't really care. And I actually think we've, I'm sure we've mentioned this before, but when a husband goes through like a radical theological shift, um, either for good or for ill, Mm -hmm. you know, whether, whether it was like a, a like, oh man, I've realized I've been in error about this and he shifts and then, um, or sometimes he's leaving the church, you know, he's going, going yeah. off into some other weird thing, but how often it is and how sad it is when the wife doesn't seem to care at all. Yeah. When it, and it makes you think like, did you never actually believe anything? <laughs> like, how can you just roll so easily into whatever other spiritual practice my husband decided well, to do? It's true that some people, it, it's sort of like. Well, we lived on this side of town, and we're moving, and we're going to go uh-huh. to that side of town now, or we're going to go to a different town, and and yeah, it'll be different. And you know, we used to be up for the. It's challenge. like well, we used to be reformed, and now we just have a little shrine in our living room with an icon, <laughs> and 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 you're like, that's that's actually a pretty big deal. <laughs> like, I'm surprised you don't notice what a big we're deal that it is. Cash. No, but like, like just like I I'm had pull no. Over there. Okay. Like I had no reason, you know, like when a woman is genuinely like, well, so long as the kids are still happy, so long as there's no, and you think, well, you never had a faith. No. If this doesn't cause you any trouble. Now you have to hear this. (laughs) This That guy has not buckled up for this gentle coast around the corner. Somebody was sitting in our, oh gosh, okay, I'll buckle up far. (laughs) Somebody there. was up in the happy? place where the cops come check on us <laughs> yeah, earlier. So we kind of pulled around the corner, but I didn't like it as much. No, it wasn't as good of a view for our view. Anyways, my point is that there are some things that's it's just funny and human that we let other people handle it for us, and we don't bother mm-hmm. with with um, thinking through it ourselves. No, but like, but other things are really truly dangerous and tragic, and. Uh, or just a really big deal to have gotten yourself into. Like, I was um, seeing a thing about, like, a, um, I think it was Eastern Orthodox, but it was some kind of bizarro Lent service that they were doing where every individual member of the congregation had to go make eye contact with every other member of the congregation, bow to them, and ask their forgiveness. And then you have to have a time of mutual forgiving. And so, like, that's a that's a thing. It's not... It's, it's, like, it's like, you can't just coast on that like it doesn't matter. No, and that's not like, oh, here at this church they do potlucks different than I've been used to before. You know, this is... That was here the hot one. Here they bake their spaghetti. <laughs> Why do people bake spaghetti? I don't know. If you guys are spaghetti bakers out there. If you are, tell me why. What's the reason? (laughs) What? (laughs) I actually, I probably would be less offended as an adult, but as a kid, spaghetti was one of my favorite meals. I love spaghetti. So you'd go to a pot yuck and you'd be like, spaghetti! There's some spaghetti. And then you would get some and you'd be so like, dry. what happened here? And this crumbly. is not spaghetti. It's like the sauce is No, my recollection was big, puffy noodles. Like the noodles yeah, that have bloated, gone way too far. Bloated. <laughs> but, then, but then it kind of comes out in a cube. And then there's just a real letdown involved. <laughs> there's a lot of layers of like, what is going on? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what. Last night we had our, that. we had parish group last night at our house. And it was it's spring break, so it was way fewer people coming. Okay. So I was like, oh, I'll just make something else because we don't have to have 
as much food. So sure. why not just do something that's not soup and bread? Yeah. So I thought, I'll make... And it actually is a shockingly good egg. I was like, why don't we do like breakfast for dinner and I'll make cinnamon rolls and a couple oh, of an omelets. That's and a good idea. We had like some fruit, you know, like just go with a yeah. completely different yeah. scene. So I made the cinnamon rolls and then but things were just getting away from me. We just did daylight saving. So it's like really weirdly not feeling like dinner time at dinner time right. yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to make this, uh, I don't even know what it is. It's like an oven omelet, but it has a sweet potato crust. And it is Interesting. shockingly good. Like, really good. It's sweet potato and red pepper flakes. Like, grated sweet potato and red pepper flakes. The crust. And then it is leeks and goat cheese in the egg. Ooh, part that on sounds top. amazing. That turns out we did not allow enough time. So we only did the leek and goat cheese top. We skipped the crust. I was like, unless we're going to feed oh. everyone an hour late when they yeah. come. Right. And so I made one of an omelet out of stuff that I happened to already have without going to the grocery store. And then the right. other one, just the topping. But that whole recipe is shockingly good with the Where sweet potato crust. Where did you find crust. it? Um, I had it at a baby shower at Aunt Meredith's house. And then I was, it was one of those times where you taste something and you're like, wait, give me this recipe. Yeah. This is unbelievable. Yeah. I'll share it on here. It's really good. And it is gluten-free. And we have a couple of gluten-free people that come to our parish group okay. that have um, celiacs or, yeah. you know, so it's nice to have something right. that's the, not the cinnamon roll to offer yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to my home where <laughs> I have no food for you. Um, so anyways... That was, but it was funny that we had to like derail that plan late in the game and be That's like, funny. skip the crust. Let's just do the egg part on top. But it's really good. I don't know how fun. I led into that from puffy spaghetti. No. You were thinking of things you make in kitchens. We just zoomed on <laughs> from like group feeding <laughs> events. Yeah. I, I don't know. The potlucks of my youth. You just would wonder because you're like, you go down that line and you think presumably people brought their favorite thing, but how is this anyone's but favorite thing? knowing my own self, I wouldn't be bringing my favorite thing. You'd be bringing what you happen to have had that you could that slap be it. together. Like, here's some Oreos. Yeah. As a child, I probably thought it reflected people's favorite things, but I I, as an one, adult who knows life, I doubt I it. I remember, I think when I, the big questions came to me. Was I was standing there looking at someone. Somebody brought a crock pot. And it was just clear liquid. With some bits of like carrots floating in it. But I was like, but what, what is it? And why do they have... It was like carrots. It was just carrots. That was it. But in a crock pot with what appeared to be water. And... <laughs> It just maybe it was to keep them warm, but I, I just I scanned, stood there like what? I would always scan the whole buffet for some no bakes because no bakes were reliably worth eating. Are we about to get pulled over again by a city official? I'm pretty sure not. They're patrolling this area. They're just now. turning around. Okay. I, if we could get pulled over by who is this? That's by the truck. city of Moscow, like water people. If <laughs> no, they pulled right. us over, I think we'd be really up a creek. <laughs> so. All right, we got to talk. Anyways, about I think in my own in my own experience, I do not feed people what I think is my best work. That's true. It really rarely works out like no, that. That's true. I agree. You feed people what you can best What's do at happen. that moment. So that might be what happens at potlucks. It's true. We our church is not done. We are actually really, really not potlucky people. So too big it, to do it. We're now. too big to do that. So we are actually really inexperienced in potlucks. And what a potluck would look like today. Mm-hmm. It might actually no, make more sense to us. I remember the potlucks of 1984. So yeah, that's where we were. That, that was our. So I think that that might have a lot to do with it because. The food of the world in 1984 was, well, the food of North Idaho. The where what, what we had there was no lettuce but iceberg. No, there's iceberg was the only kind of lettuce there was no that was parmesan out. The parmesan was like can. a wild novelty. There was no pesto. I remember the year pesto. Yeah, made the and scene. then and then when sun dried tomatoes uh-huh. were the child star of the 90s, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then there were big revolutions like have you ever heard of Chipotle? Chipotle yeah. Uh, yeah. flavors or 
I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. That but was there's... well into the 2000s when we hit the Chipotle flavors. Chipotle. Yeah, and I think that now there's just a different kind of commitment to world cuisine yeah. that we did not have in our youth. No. We had turkey no. ham in our youth. There's a lot of taco <laughs> seasoning, I think, that happened in the 80s. <laughs> On iceberg lettuce. <laughs> Taco <laughs> seasonings. And uh, I think in some ways, sometimes I wish we could go back. I mean, I don't. I don't, really. But I do. There's something winsome about having a more limited palate to work with. When you just need to, like, plan a menu like, and feed people. Like, here's some ground beef. Here's yeah, because I feel seasoning. like every time you're making a menu plan... Maybe you should be making Japanese like dumplings. Like, what about like Bangladeshi what? food? Yeah, oh, why haven't I done any Ethiopian <laughs> cuisine lately? <laughs> what what world do we feel like visiting this week? And sometimes it feels a little... It's kind of... There's so many choices that it is hard to come down with it's what true. actually would be the right thing. That's true. But I feel like we need to talk about something... A value? Something of... What thing of value would you like to talk about? <laughs> I was I was lobbying that to you, Rach, and you were going to have something. We just scrolled through some questions um, that people... Yeah, I've been, I've been being so diligent in saving the questions. So, I felt like there were a number of different ones that were all sort of takes on husband-wife relations. Like, how to... How to be a submissive wife without being a doormat. How to respect your husband. You know, those kinds of things. Like, don't you think it, the, yeah, there seemed to comes, be a predominance often. of those? And there was so another So we decided one. to open up this conversation with, when your husband does something, you shouldn't follow. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he gallops off into another religion. Idolatry, perhaps? Yeah. Take a minute. Before don't don't be submissive. No. That's the application. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there was another question as well. I feel like there was a number of things about just sort of women's roles in general. But one was about Deborah as a judge of the Old Testament. How do you... There are a lot of people who take Deborah as the get out of jail free card. Deborah is like the first thing that gets brought up. They don't need to listen to what Paul said because Deborah. Right. <laughs> It's true that that is a that's one that people bring up, and I've seen it a lot. Of they try to they try to point out that that happened, and it's like, well, of course it did, and that's fine. And I think the <laughs> I, I think the Becca's got the answer for you. Well, of course it happened. Like, it's fine. It's not like Paul didn't know about Deborah, you know. And right. I think what happens is people they want to pit one part of scripture against another part of scripture instead of having a commitment at the front end to, to, to all of it, not having contradictions between right. scriptural passages. So if you know that God's word does not contradict itself. Well, then, like an example would be that we know biblically that women are not supposed to be in combat roles. Women are not supposed to be doing that. Right. And yet we have Jail, the wife of Heber, killing well, Sisera with a tent peg yeah. and being praised for that. And she wasn't, it wasn't just that she... Well, she didn't go out to battle. She was she, in No, tent. I'm saying she didn't go out to battle, but she definitely seized an opportunity yeah. to use violent force, yeah. which is not what women are called to all the time, right? So she's, but my point is, my point is just in a different area. It's saying we can believe both of those things, that she was she deserved to be praised for her uh, odd initiative there to yeah. get things done. Well, and the same thing is that women are not called to always be the assassins. No. like, But I do think it's important at the very front end to not see Deborah as counteracting what Paul said elsewhere. So, right, or that like when Paul praises a woman, that it's not the same thing as Paul not having meant what he meant about women yeah. or not. You know, right. so so that's the first thing is kind of like your take on scripture is that scripture is not going to be full of contradictions. But then the other thing is, you have to remember the different spheres of government because, um, you know, there are the three spheres of government: the church, the state, and the family, and they have different rules. You know, yeah. they're different offices; they have different rules, and um, 
And when Paul is talking about, I do not permit a woman to teach or have authority, he's clearly not talking about in a family because you have proverbs like, my son, listen, listen to, to my the law of yeah. your mother. Yeah. And, and he's so talking about he's spiritual talking about, authority and yeah. teaching the word. And he's talking about the church at that point. And he's not talking about the civil government, which is where Deborah was, was she, she was holding a civil office. However, I do think there's other reasons to think that if your civil government is dominated by women, that's, that's also a not bad a great thing. Sign no, it's not a good sign. Doing. Yeah. But it, you know, like it was a shame to what's his face that, that he wouldn't go out without Deborah. What was his name? Sister was mm. the one jail killed, but it was Barrack, right? I think. Anyway. Pop I'm just quiz. saying that, like, pop so, quiz on Deborah. To say, hey, women aren't allowed to preach, and then people say, ha ha, what about Deborah? Is sort of. I like, recently had someone going after me about why won't I address men in the same tone as I will address women, and I was like, well, because oh my gosh, because I actually I because I actually take the words of scripture seriously, and I don't think, as an author, I don't think that it would be inappropriate of me to write a book that was both for men and women. Right? Like, if I wrote a book that Depending was... on the book. Yeah. Right, but I'm saying... By, I don't think it would be inappropriate for me to write something with an intended audience sure. of men and women, but it would dramatically change my tone because I don't mind speaking to women with authority... Like when you when you are saying you need to repent of this because of this passage of scripture, I believe it is within biblical bounds for me to speak like that to women sure. and not to men. And so when the men want to come sit in and listen to my talk that is clearly addressed to women, I have no, I have no uh, concern with that. You know, like they're listening. They're listening in. Yeah. Of course, we don't believe it's wrong for men to learn from women, like. But I think it would be wrong of me to try to speak with authority to men. On certain subjects. On su- yeah, on some But, yeah, things. on certain subjects. But, but when we say certain subjects, spiritual issues are from the word. Like so teaching from instance, the word with authority. If I'm speaking at a teacher training thing, I don't at all mind getting up and talking to men in the audience. But I wouldn't lead a Bible study. No with men in the audience. I mean, like, it's just, there's, there's differences there. But one thing that this just gets me down is women taking on pastors on the internet. And the thing is, there are plenty of pastors that I have all kinds of disagreements with Mm -hmm. issues with whatever. I think they're doing it wrong. I would not ever sail out and and no, it's go not. about rebuking even a pastor, pastor, even a pastor that we believe is in error, in is ever, not in big ways. Mm-hmm. I would never. Um, Actually, I would say that I would. It would just even someone who's I think is a straight up false teacher. Exactly. I would not call out as though I was the appointed by no, God person to call him no, out. And that's the, I think that's the key is it's not about you shouldn't think it. It's about who's the no, person. And it's not even about being shy. If someone says, is this a good person for me to be listening to? You know, you should say, I be pursuing Joel Osteen? I would be <laughs> like, no, you shouldn't. It's a bad idea. No. Here's why I think he's wrong. But that's still a world apart from from saying Joel me, Osteen you need to repent <laughs> and you need to you know like that's not my job and it, no. and it is not it does not show my passion for God's word no. to do so it no. shows a different passion that is not few, God's word there are a few things about it <clears throat> one is the um, I you know just all the passages about not leaping up in church and demanding answers from the pastor. <laughs> Ask your husband at home. Right. <laughs> and so I don't think it makes but, it any but better. But the other one is filling a void that men should be. Right? Like that. Sure. But I also mean there's the, there's other things about not entertaining charges against elders without, you know. Oh yeah. Like running a quick and, internet trial and then, <laughs> yeah, and then trying to hoist him on his own petard which you don't even know what it is you're like long distance accusations and because yeah. that's that's very common yeah mm-hmm. yeah trying to yeah go but ahead I finish just, what you're saying no i just i just feel like there are this is something i see conservative women doing a lot is they feel like look at me searching the scriptures and then calling out all of these pastors right. for their errors 
And sure, you might be dead right, except for the fact that you are, well, way out of bounds is what I think you are. Um, you know, like even, I think it can even happen in like comment threads yeah. where just aggressively disagreeing with him in comment threads and stuff. It's just like, it's, it's, um, maybe not ladies, maybe not. <laughs> maybe, maybe way not. And, <laughs> and, and part of the funny thing about it is that we are in no way opposed to aggressive disagreement or no. discussion or saying that women aren't capable of thinking about those things. But I think that that idea that it shows your fervor for truth or something is just wrong because it shows that you're not actually applying. No. Um, and it, what I was going to say is sometimes you may be actually really um, wound up about it because nobody else seems to be rebuking right. this particular problem. And and I just think that then it is even more important for women to not fill that void. If yeah. men ought to be doing it, then it is not good for women to step in and take control of the situation well, if a men should great, have been doing it. That great line in If a men did you hear how I said that? If a men If a men should have been doing it. <laughs> no, oh. there's a great line in Narnia when Aslan No, Father Christmas gives the gifts to the girls and he says I can't remember if it's to Susan or Lucy, but he says, I don't mean you to fight in the battle because battles are ugly when women fight. And I think it doesn't make it better if it's a verbal fight on the internet. My interwebs. children noticed when they happened upon now I feel like I'm going to get this wrong they happened upon uh, the old VHS recording of the really bad beaver suit uh, <laughs> oh, right. the witch yeah. in the wardrobe yeah. and, but our kids were like they took out that part oh really they, apparently that oh, was edited oh, interesting. in the beaver suit drama <laughs> they took that out my kids were like those feminists. But the thing is, oh, this is not to be like misunderstood to think that women aren't allowed to disagree with men. Because I have no problem disagreeing with men on certain subjects in certain venues. Actually, in certain I, places. I would add something though. Disagreeing with men and disagreeing with women, we don't think any of our disagreements should turn into kind of Cat spittle-flecked fights? anger festivals. No. Which is, that's the thing is for many people, disagreement equals that. Yeah. And and that never should be the case. I have a thing to say about that too, so let me circle back around to that in one second. But okay. I just mean, it isn't about, like, okay, in a college classroom, am I allowed to disagree with a fellow classmate who's a man? Well, oh, of no, course, of you, course can. you should. Can you argue with your professor? Of course you can. Should you take on your pastor publicly? No. Heavens. No. no. It's like, so it's not about woman to man. It's about um, what office, you know, are you in and what office is he in and how should you conduct yourself? Here's a pop quiz. In that case. And Americans are so egalitarian. What that, if your pastor, what if your new pastor is a woman? <laughs> <laughs> Then do your worst. Then I don't what care. should you do then? <laughs> no, but I just mean we tend to think, oh, if it's okay for me to disagree with, you know, right. this man, then it's okay for me to disagree with any man under any circumstances and, you know, in and actually, any venue. There's, there's just a real difference between disagreement, though, and fighting. Well, yeah. And I have a thing about that because um, <clears throat> there, I think... Well, maybe public discourse had already descended into the sewers, but it feels to me like social media has made it worse. And right. people get personally offended by disagreements in ways that I think are just so, Dumb. so unbelievable and unbecoming to Christians. Right. Because you can disagree on an academic subject and presumably you can keep it academic without getting your feelings hurt, without becoming a victim, without getting, you know, descending to personalities. Right. And I, I actually saw, um, an astonishing, uh, attack on a child rearing book. I think it was just a shepherding a child's heart or something unexceptionable. It was like, <laughs> it was right. But these women went for it like, in a frenzy, like, mm -hmm. a, like a complete 
out of control frenzy. Right. But the thing that really killed me and I thought was the cherry on top was when they decided that the book <laughs> was spiritual abuse of the reader. <laughs> <laughs> Now you have spiritually abused me by have you by showing Man, me. I'll tell you, that book. spiritual abuse has come down in the world. <laughs> well, no, and there was a whole argument for how it was spiritually abusing the reader because it was like I can't remember. It was somehow no, like but a, it's just funny because you think spiritual abuse is a real thing. Let's not make it into something but like that. I don't want to be ugly, but I'm gonna be. Um, it's sort of like if that's, that's a good quote. <laughs> I'll, I'll, Nobody, pass, no, I'll pass that on to Jake. I don't want to be ugly, but I'm going to be. <laughs> Let's hope that one slips past Jake. I think we just need noticing. to make one t shirt with a bunch of interchangeable <laughs> quote hangings that we can put on the front, like a race number. You just pin it on the front. Yeah. Um, no, the thing is, is that I, if that is your level of discourse, is I disagree with this. Therefore, it is spiritually abusing me. Right. If that's the best that women can do in their in their uh, debate skills, I think women don't deserve to be taught to read anymore. <laughs> so here's here's what I think. I think that like say you are, and I have been in these conversations, right? So say that you're talking to a man, or you're in a conversation, and a man says, "I believe women are inferior to men." Period. Full stop. That's it. Be like, do you? Sport? And you're like, wow, <laughs> that's a position. You know, yeah. There you are. But the the thing that's funny is that is he wrong? Absolutely, he's wrong. And and I tell my kids this all the time. Anyways, it's like, why do you think someone would say that? As dad would always say, they pull the chain to hear the bell ring, <laughs> right? What do you think is going to happen if you tell a woman that women are inferior uh-huh. to men? And and it is so stupid, but it is not an insult to me. It changes nothing about my life. It changes no. nothing about my value. It changes no. nothing. And so why be threatened? Not to mention, it's a free country. And if he wants to be a jackass, let him. Let him be. Just have, like, he can be that way. And the thing that's so funny about it is that, of course, you could discuss it with him. But flipping out (laughs) is only going to make his point. (laughs) Like, losing your cool entirely because you cannot just have a discussion or, or, you know, push him on something. Or be like, I'm interested in why you think that's a biblically sustainable position. (laughs) Is not the same thing as... I cannot believe that you said that and it hurt my feelings and I'm like yelling at everyone and flipping because out. I mean, what point, on earth? I would disagree with the man, but I would want to send the woman into time out. Yeah, you just be like, take yourself out of here. You are helping no one. Like, also, this is you're not it. completely ill-equipped to have a sensible discussion of any kind. If you're losing your cool, you don't got anything to contribute no. to, and, to the conversation. And a debate, a debate over an important subject is presumably too important to to, to wind up like right. off in the weeds like that because yeah or it's too important to let your own emotions dictate how you deal right. with it and like how you discuss this is it. a thing that women are much worse at than men it's not to say that men universally do a good job because they don't right. there's lots of men who are not conducting themselves well in discussions also However, I think they are more able to, like, you can picture, a ma- like, colleagues. Imagine in a meeting, two men, like, let's say they're in a meeting, they completely disagree. They say, that is a horrible idea. I absolutely disagree with it. And yet they can walk out and still be friends and, and they could grab a beer and it's fine. Women right. are very, very, very less able to do that. Mm-hmm. Because they take any disagreement, they or they they can. It reminds take me of any um, disagreement as a personal affront. It reminds me of that in Lewis. Which one is it? Where he talks about how anyone would rather, if your dog bit the neighbor's kid or whatever, oh, yeah. that everyone in the world would rather talk to the father than uh-huh, the mother. Uh-huh. That the mother is a far more. Well, it's like the Kipling poem: "The female, the species, is more, more deadly, deadly than, than the, the male." male. <laughs> and or in the Birdie Wooster version, the F of the S is more D than the M. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, but but the it's the less control, less politically um, politically meaning dealing with people outside of right. your own family. Less less. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Less chill about looking at right. the situation without all your own emotions yeah. driving it. And so I think and that this is really leaping to another thing, but it's a thing to pursue as a woman. Say your kids are in school and having trouble with other people. It's yeah. a thing to pursue not investing your own emotions nope. into it. And every once in a while you'll hear a, a mom be like, Anyways, this happened, and that kid was such a jerk to my child, and I said, well, you know, like, like you hear the mom yeah. talking, telling you what she told her own child, uh, then it's like, you did not, like, yeah. you did not yeah. get yourself, basically, you started behaving like another worse junior high girl <laughs> in, that's now not in junior high, but dealing yeah. exactly the same yeah. speed and way. No, because if you have a mom saying to the daughter, it's like... Well, let's just have a party and don't invite Fine. her. We won't invite her and we'll take pictures and we'll post it all over the internet. And we will make her feel bad <laughs> that she left you out. <laughs> and then the next thing we're going to do is like, and you're like, wow, that's a horrible plan. Well, but I do think that like women, if you're going to engage on, I don't care what subject, maybe it's vaccinations, maybe it's, you know, politics or I, I don't know anything just don't let yourself actually, get personally and actually offended. abortion abortion is a really important one because because it is a really shockingly evil discussion yeah. in our country and it makes it harder for christian women uh to see the line in their own behavior about it because it is such a yeah. such a weighty horrifying evil yeah. That it becomes sort of like, of course, the right thing is for me to be absolutely to screamingly angry, flipping out, wound up in all the ways about this issue. Mm -hmm. And and it seems like that would be a righteous response to this, but right. it is not a righteous response well, to it. And, and I do think that, um, I mean, we talked about this a little bit, I think, last week or whenever it was, but... Um, we're reading Ovid right now in my classical lit class. And so there's a good bit of Bacchanalia going on. So you've got the Maenads who are the female worshipers of Bacchus. And they would go out in these festivals, lose their minds completely, these women. Right. Dress in animal skins, go berserk. Let their hair go, down. That's, yeah. where, that's where that phrase comes from. <laughs> go marauding about They'd the shake countryside. shake their hair down, like get their hair in their face and go murder their husbands. Well, they would... <laughs> <laughs> they would go murder anything they came across. Yeah, so like dismembering ripping, animals. Yeah, like just tearing them apart. And then, of course, they come upon, upon Orpheus and they just rage him. at him and they dismember him and throw his body parts in the river. And what a good time! And but the thing is, is that um, the mobs of women behaving in completely insane ways mm -hmm. cause great destruction. You know, yeah. and and I feel like you see that same behavior on the internet where it's like a feeding frenzy of women whipping each other up. It's, it's completely irrational, but it's destructive nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And they, they just want to take somebody down. Dismember it never, him. It's never a civilization building up no, out of it. No, but it's like, it's like when you picture the sort of bloody ripping the, tearing them limb from limb and throwing them in the river, there are a lot of little food fights on the internet where you feel like this feels the same like thing. that. These women want to tear this person apart and throw his bits in the river, metaphorically speaking, but it is um, it is still motivated by this group anger frenzy thing, mm -hmm. and I do think that, that women that just need to back it's, it up. And it's important to notice that the only time that that kind of, that that kind of thing happens is when the women are in service to a different God. Yeah. This is the worship of a false God. It is not the worship of our God. No. There is no time that the worship of our God results in women behaving no. like that. And you read like, what is a, what is Mormon. a godly woman like in scripture is the law of kindness is on her lips. And you know, like she is, she is obedient and um, right. And thoughtful. Say and, and I mean thoughtful in, in the sense, not like right, thoughtful, but you know Yeah, I mean? yeah. And one of the things that, like, for instance, that illustration that we used earlier of like a man telling you that women are inferior to men. 
say that you continue that discussion with like, I'm interested in how you think you can support that biblically. Yeah. And say, without you losing your cool, he notices that he was wrong. Or like, I shouldn't have said it that way. Or I don't, this was wrong. Are you completely disposed to forgive right. and rejoice that he has changed his mind? Or were you actually totally whizzed up about wanting to destroy someone and take them down? You know, what I, like, yeah. it's a very different motivation. Like, and it's important that we be aware can, of that. You can deeply disagree with someone and think they're wrong in every way without letting it touch you in the spot that makes you angry and wound up. You can just be like, wow. Something my husband has said to our kids in context that I probably won't remember, but we were always talking about, you know, when you build a block tower Mm -hmm. and somebody walks by and like their pant leg touches it and the whole Mm -hmm. thing falls down. Mm -hmm. And Luke's comment was always like, you're, you are not to be allowing everyone access to your, like if your feelings are somewhat delicate and balanced in some way that you should, they should not be open to, you know, like that it is your responsibility to not have that be touchable. Like to have that be in a case that is protected. Like this is just not, I am not free and out here for everyone to insult and like, or an insult should never actually contact. It should never be like, you've ruined me. Yeah. Because I do think that there's a lot of, um, sort of ironic, there's women who don't want the men to be in charge of them in some way, or they, Mm -hmm. they're very offended at the men, whatever. And they basically are allowing those men to drive their entire life right? because they're driven by this desire to at those men. And it's sort of like, well, if you really don't want them to have any authority over you, then you shouldn't give them that authority to boss your spirit around. Right. They should actually not be able to access how you feel right now. Right. And if you open that window or whatever, and so now they have access to make you angry and make you And then all you do is freak out that they made you angry when you invited them in to do it. I know. It's like, well, walk away. Just ignore them. (laughs) Let them be little piggies by themselves. That's all right. I think it just kind of begins with something that, um, that I think it's grandpa who always said it. Uh, and then I know dad has always said it, that, that it is also a sin to be offended. Yeah. Or like when our kids say, she's just really annoying me right now. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, it's also a sin to be so readily annoyed. And I always, like, I remember it was always like, it's a sin to, to give offense to your brother if you're doing it intentionally, but it's a sin to take offense. And it was always like, you can't actually have a squabble. Remember mom and dad always saying this, Mm -hmm. you can't have a squabble with one person. There is no such thing as a one man squabble. No, if there is a squabble, it's because there's two people involved. (laughs) Right. And so when our kids would get in a fight of some kind, um, like that, she's annoying me, or but he did this and she did that. There is no innocent party there. No. And so we would always tell our kids that if someone comes up to you and is randomly picking a fight with you, then come find us and yeah. say, I'm having some trouble with this person who mm-hmm. is trying to pick a fight. Because that's the only way you could not also be in yeah. sin in the... No. You know. No, and you might not have been the aggressor, but if you became a combatant... Then yeah, you, and you, you can and you can walk away from that, and you can do it even when it's not your sibling, when it is just someone on the internet randomly trying to provoke yeah. you. But I do think somebody else asked, like, how do you discuss things with your husband? Cause, and I think it's important for us to make the distinction that we're talking about people out there, and this is very different than, well, it's equally applicable to not let yourself get whizzed up and angry, right? But I also think. If you're, if you have a disagreement, say with your husband, you would treat it very differently than this random man that you're like, whatever. Right. Like if your husband said, I think that you, that you are inferior to me and you are not as valuable as I am and you are less than, then we would say you need to go talk to your pastor, talk to your elders, um, not, not, and not be like. Why would you let that bother you that your husband said something like that? <laughs> right. We like, would say, we're talking about people who shouldn't have access to 
right to you in that way but of course if it's your husband that's a different situation and so just okay so should we move on to tips here sure let's do why don't you go first oh dear you always do this to me you pop this out at me at the end i don't think i do you do it's your fault um (laughs) (laughs) guys i'd like you to we're siblings and this is an example of someone (laughs) trying to provoke you trying to pick a squabble and a fight and i'm just gonna walk away from that i'm just gonna be like Mom, she's pretty good. Becca's, Becca's trying to she's pick a fight with me on the podcast, godly. and I'm not going to be annoyed. <laughs> Look at me go. <laughs> um, so, I am rereading all the Narnia Chronicles right now because I, I'm going to be speaking at a conference in a couple weeks about Narnia, and mm, so it is so fun to reread them because, of course. We grew up with Narnia. It was very deeply embedded, but I haven't sat down and read them since my kids were younger. You yeah, know, yeah. like when been a while. And um, it's such a great little time through it because it's like it's all so familiar, but also like oh, it's been a long time. Yeah. Narnia this just kind of really keeps fun... getting better. Yeah, yeah. And I know that that's kind of the weirdest most obvious tip in all the world to read Narnia but there's so much truth in it oh man that is so profound truth in it in this very simple yeah you know it's never it's one of those ones that is just never you're never too old for it no it's a good it's it's amazing and there's just there's so much um virtue you know very common virtues yeah about how to be brave and how to be selfless and how to not be a brat. Anyway, I do think that if you're not steeping your children in a healthy marinade of Narnia, you should be. You're failing them. You you're should failing be. them. Get them in there. Get them a yeah. nice Narnia marinade. <laughs> Plus, it's fun. Like, I, because we're on spring break, like in the morning, I, you know, I'm doing the Bible reading and then just have a nice little read through that Horse and fun. His Boy with my coffee. It's like, that's random, but it's fun. <laughs> it's weird. actually really fun. What a random thing. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what I'm reading right now. Because I can't think of what I'm reading right now. Mm-hmm. No knowledge of what I'm reading right now. Um, I did just read a book that I bought at the Great Homeschool Convention okay. for... And I'm sorry that I can't remember the name of the author. Uh, because I met the author and he... Okay. And he signed the book for Blair. But it is a really... it was. I bought it from the rabbit room, people. It's the, the angel knew Papa and the dog. Okay. And it was... A, I read that on the way home, on the flight home. Read, read it quickly. And it's a sweet... It's sweet. It's like weirdly... It's a well done... It's a well done... Fun. Kids book that is... But it is different in that it is really full of longing. Like there are the open... There are the open end... Um, like it could be a happy ending, but the happy ending is not completed in the book. Okay. Like it, you know, it has, it has the, it has the parts, the component parts are there for there to be a happy ending, Okay. but it is not all wrapped up, which apparently he says in the back was, that was part of his influence of the Russians he was reading recently, but it's a sweet, it's a sweet book. It's, and I enjoy that it's kind of a literary riff on Balaam's ass okay. is in there. I like it's fun. It's a good book. So that was a fun one. That was a nice That's cool. Adds a different element to our children's lit variety nice. at home. Very nice. Yeah. So that's it. That's all my. That's what we've got. We got guys. no good tips this week. We'll work on some better. Why we always say I, that? We Why do. do we make a we... tip department when we <laughs> never have a tip? We just it's do this to question. ourselves week after week. I think of things in the middle of the yeah, week. Yeah, me too. And I'm like, that's a good tip. I'll share that sometime. Yeah. But no, I didn't because no. I don't remember. No. Oh, well, one day, guys, yeah. we'll follow through and actually do that. Well, All thanks right. for coming. We'll Have see you fun. next time. Bye-bye. Bye. You think of yourself now and then in four years' time, what do you want yourself to look like and 
is the education that you're considering going to help you get to that place. When you're a student, you want to become like your teacher. You're going to become like your teacher. Looking at NSA beforehand, I knew I wanted to become like the men who are teaching here. Fireman, husband, father, doctor, no matter where you want to go, NSA is just such good preparation for the person that you want to be. If you want to be an effective Christian, you need to be able to lead and shape culture. If you want to do that, no matter what your occupation is, you need to shape yourself, um, prepare yourself as a person for that job. And liberal arts is, I think, the best education you can have for that. To learn more, check us out online at nsa.edu.